Sweet. So we'll just talk about like all that sort of stuff because, bro, you're like, it's unique Sweet. in a way like where you're like indigenous and Māori. Yeah. yeah. Like there's not too many that nah, have both. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll, we'll just talk about your life, bro. Like whatever. Like we can chat footy. Like we'll obviously talk about footy like now because it's your life. But yeah, yeah. like we'll just talk more life stuff. Like how you were like growing up. Like what was it like? Because you didn't grow up in a um, estate, did you? No. Nah. Nah. Where what's the what's the area? Uh oh, so I grew up like Oh, I grew up in like the western suburbs. But then like before that I was in the northern suburbs for a bit. So like but Hopper's Crossing is like where I like my home sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's on all the video clips in there, yeah, yeah. Yo. I was even watching some of those um your um was it Altona Roosters? Yeah, yeah. Like on your YouTube channel? Oh hey, yeah. I was watching and I was like I was like, bro, that looks like some of the dudes on your video clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, been, you know, yeah. like, the dude, and I was like, man, I'm sure that was, like, one of the <laughs> dudes on the clips. Like, we all, yeah, Bro, you together. just tear them up, yeah. like. <laughs> shit. Because one of my mates, he played there. Walker? Oh, yeah, I know Walker. You know Walker? Yeah. yeah I'm he, pretty sure I'm related to him, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I grew up, oh, like, that's what this. Because he, he played for them, like, yeah. and I was like. When I seen that you played there, I was like, man, I'm sure that was Walker's club that he used to yeah, talk about. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Are we good? We'll start, eh? Sweet, sweet. All right. And then what? If you're <coughs> not here, I'll just... I'll yeah, I'll just stop it. Yeah, just put it to stop and stop on it. Sweet. All good then. I'll, um... I'll check my phone, please. Oh. I don't know where. I don't know where your phone is. Okay, I'll speak out. Have fun. Yeah, sweet as. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. All right, I'll get this rolling. Um, I'll just do a little intro, bro, and then we'll start. Yes, yeah, sweet, easy. All right, sweet. Make sure this is on silent. All right, you sweet? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> bro. <laughs> actual <laughs> I'm like always like man my mouth never gets dry but yeah. as soon as I'm on here I'm like <coughs> 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 alright ready three two one uh, welcome guys uh, to the safe space uh, podcast this will be our uh, first show of a new show uh, and it's called the journeyman project um, and the purpose of this show is to get to know um, people, their story, their journey, uh, and their lives. Um, m- focusing on uh, who they are and why uh, they do what they do. So not necessarily um, all the highlights and the glitz and the glam and all the fame, but breaking down uh, the person behind uh, the camera and the story behind everything and it's like with my privilege um that i get to welcome our first guest on um jtb big jermaine what's up my bro thanks for having me um pleasure (laughs) gun so like we've known each other for a little while now sort of just like through mutual friends shout out kainoa (laughs) um but man like a lot of people like they know that you're an athlete yep. uh, they know that you play for the warriors um that you're a gun footy player like they know like they know all the surface level stuff you know what i mean and the yeah. stuff that they can find on um google instagram all your socials wikipedia yeah. Man, some of this stuff's not even real but <laughs> um man tell us more about who you are and the kid growing up uh in melbourne who's part indigenous part moldy like what's that like for you growing up in the suburbs in north and western melbourne yeah yeah um yeah so i guess yeah people don't really get to see behind like the footy player and that but um for me like my journey started in melbourne uh born and bred there in melbourne um both my parents were pretty young when they had me i think mum was 19 dad was 20 um 
obviously dad's uh comes from new zealand uh maori maori heritage um and my mum is um indigenous she's aboriginal australian um but yeah uh for me so i started in the northern suburbs uh we grew up there like for the first four years of my life i think are you the oldest yeah so i'm the oldest of five siblings um i've got four younger brothers oh um, snap five yeah. boys <laughs> yeah that's hectic yeah so i'm the oldest of five um but yeah so we spent the first four years of our lives we grew up in the northern suburbs in melbourne in a in a suburb called thomastown um and that's where my parents sort of met around those areas yeah um when dad moved from new zealand to australia and then um yeah so we spent the first four years of our lives there we lived there with uh, my mum's parents um so my nan and pop on mum's side uh, so we lived there for yeah four years and then um my nan passed away my mum's mum yeah and then uh so she passed away through from cancer and then after that that's when we moved out to the western suburbs oh really which is where i sort of grew up like the rest of my life there um so we lived we went to the west side where um that's where dad's family was staying at the time yeah um in point cook out there um so we lived there for a bit with them um and then that would have been that must have been like rough bro like on your mum like being young like she would have been younger than us right like yeah. losing her mum yeah you know what I'm, and then having like all her like young kids you know what i mean yeah. like that would have been tough on her yeah that was definitely tough for tough for mum um she's at like she's been through a lot um we oh, we lost my grandfather too her, his, her father that was a bit later yeah um but yeah yeah that was very tough for my mum then we went and stayed out with my dad's family so like because mum like didn't have much like family support yeah, there. yeah yeah so we moved out yeah out west with my dad's family there um did your dad did your dad's whole family move over from back home or yeah so i uh, so originally so my dad um his mum his parents both came over here they, they were um shearers so they worked oh, yep. shearing sheds, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so they did a lot of shearing around australia and then yeah they ended up in melbourne but dad was living with his grandfather yeah back in um oh so dad's from napier he yep. grew up in napier hawks bay so dad lived there with his um grandfather and then yeah he eventually moved over i think when he was about 17 and then to live with the um yeah my grandparents my his parents and then um yeah so he moved to melbourne and yeah he went to school they went to uh school in yeah in northern suburbs that's where him and mum met oh nice yeah High school sweetheart too. Yeah, yeah. High school sweetheart. <laughs> nah, but yeah, um, yeah. So then when we went out west, that's when I first, um, we first moved to, uh, after my grandparents' house, we moved to a suburb called Hoppers Crossing. Yeah, go on. Which is that's that's my home, HC. Um, Mate, that's the um, that's one of your videos in there, eh? Like yeah, all your yeah. Clips. You Yo. see all the boys like shout out the cross. That's that's the homies and that. Got some tracks and that out there. Bro, that's gone. Like I. I've obviously like followed your like music career like and like bro I think like what's cool like for me seeing and I think it's like because you like you've never forgotten like you know where you come from yeah. and like even when like on your off seasons and that like I see that you go even though that you were based in Auckland you're still going back to Melbourne yeah. like Always back to, to you back know there. what I mean like back yeah. to your area or like wherever you're from yeah. and like always still with the same boys yeah. like that you grew up with like all this like your lifestyles are different now but yeah. like it hasn't changed yeah nah for sure yeah i always make sure i try to get back home like and i still got the same circle down there we're always tight and they always like st contact me and we stay in touch all the time so whenever i do get time like i always make sure i try to get back and see everyone you know because that's yeah that's home gun yeah that, did your parents still live down there yeah so my parents are still there um my parents are split up now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, mum lives in Hoppers Crossing still. Dad lives out in Werribee, or like just next suburb over. Yeah, yeah. So they all still live there. Um, but yeah, everyone's there, all my family, aunties, uncles and that. That's mad. Like, yeah. But what's a, so obviously you're like part Indigenous, part Māori. Yeah. Growing up in like the suburbs of Melbourne yeah. and you said like your, um, your grandparents like passed away like on your Indigenous side. Yeah. What's like, in your life was there much of like a cultural um upbringing or is it sort of like a distant 
Yeah, um, I guess I always sort of grew up around it, um, you know, with my indigenous side because my nan was indigenous um, on my mum's side. Yep. And oh, we actually just found out that my mum, my grandfather is he's Australian, but we found out he's got um, Lithuanian heritage, like oh, just yeah. recently. So that's something I'll probably try to look into. But um, yeah, so when my nan passed away, like oh, well, when she was alive, that's how we grew up with oh, our yeah. Aboriginal culture and all that. And I know dad being Māori, like um, his family was pretty strong into it. So we grew up around a lot of the, our Māori culture as well. So like, yeah, growing up, I was always connected. But then I think, you know, once my nan passed away, like, we try to like get deeper into it, but there's still like so much that we, I still got to go find out and yeah. get connected to. Um, that, but yeah. That's, and that's like one of the things like, because I know like, for just like from my own experiences and like people that I know, like a lot of young people like move over here yep. and then they like get disconnected. Like yeah. they start, I don't know, like getting up to whatever they're getting up to, you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. it's like cool to know that even though that you were raised like in the suburbs of Melbourne, that you're still like culturally connected to both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I like it feels like it's like over here, like in Australia, like that it's not like really a culturally like enriched um country yeah, like it's yeah. not like in new zealand you know what i mean like yeah. it's it's everyone embraces the culture yeah 100 percent. yeah no i think so. yeah i think like yeah growing up i always like our family we always try to make sure we we knew uh, like our people and where we're from and on both sides too and like growing up like i'd always go back to new zealand go back to napier like visit all my family and that there and learn a bit about like my people there as well so like I'd always like try to stay connected, even though like living in the western suburbs of Melbourne, you know, there's nothing like culturally like I'm connected to there. But um, I always make sure I know like that's, where I'm from and that. That's mad. Yeah. Um. So like you're a footy player now. Yeah. Um. Like we met through footy and stuff. Like what's like you grew up in Melbourne. Yeah. Um. But we met when you were playing up here in Brizzy. Yeah, yeah. Like. Were you always, like, was that your dream to be, like, an NRL player? Yeah, since I was young. So, like, I started playing when I was, my dad put me in when I was four. I was playing, um, yeah, I was when I was four years old. I went and played for a club down in Melbourne, um, Waverley, Oakley Panthers. And that's how I sort of got into it. And I knew, like, from the moment I, like, could first pick up a ball, like, I always wanted to play, like, rugby league. You know, I'd watch it on the um, TV and that all the time, like, NRL. Um, so I knew I always wanted to be a footy player because um, it's pretty like AFL dominant yeah, down in Melbourne but yeah yeah in Melbourne so it's like heavily AFL dominated like there's not much rugby league down there it's slowly growing like with yeah. the Melbourne Storm and their success and that so it's slowly growing down there but yeah it was always like I always knew I wanted to play rugby league I'd play like AFL like <laughs> in school and stuff and like I had a couple of games like I found it like it wasn't too bad just the running yeah, heaps of running like <laughs> yeah, but I could never. Yeah, I was. It was always like rugby league for me. I always knew I wanted to. Were you always like a? Yeah, were you always a big kid though? Like growing up. Yeah. You're a big I, lad now. Like, were you like a big kid? Like, or. Yeah, I was like, yeah, pretty like decent size growing yeah. up. Yeah, but I used to play like, so in my juniors and that I used to play like five eight. A lot of people. Don't yeah, know I heard that. that. Yeah. Yeah. But I used to be a five eight because I was never like the biggest kid, but like, I wasn't like a huge kid like. But yeah, I guess I just grew over time and then it was way too big to play in the halves. And then they just <laughs> gradually, they yeah. push you in, eh? Second they just row push and you in. End up at prop. <laughs> oh, no, that's mad. So, are you a Melbourne Storm fan? Yeah. Uh, yeah, growing so growing up? up, like, growing up in Melbourne, that was the only team, so. Who were your idols? Um, G.I. Greg Inglis, he was like, my fellow. Like, he had to be massive, he eh? He was my idol, like, growing up, like, especially in Melbourne. And like you know, he's indigenous too, and like he just he's a weapon. Like, Proud indigenous man yeah, too, yeah. Eh? So like that was someone I looked up to. Um, was, oh, like obviously you know the big three and that. Is, yeah, guns. Gi man, yeah. he's a diff- he was a different beast day eh, oh, in Melbourne. Real way, eh? he was like he's a man here. Eh? Just crazy, bro. Like just like a freak of nature. Like yeah. how are you so? Just big, natural, eh? strong, strong quick. and it's effortless. Yeah, like he never looked <laughs> like he was trying. Yeah, he makes it look so easy. Eh? He just, just runs a muck on that field. Eh? And that's what I think made him so great is that it was like so effortless. Like, yeah. 
him sprinting away like he's not man i've seen i've got the ugliest facials yeah. but he just does it easy yeah. like and there's dudes behind him like giving it everything yeah. and he's just cruising, just cruising bro. <laughs> nah, he's a freak that's mad and then so were you signed by melbourne um yeah so eventually like so i went through all the juniors and stuff and then like i got an opportunity with the um storm like sg ball squad yep i think i started training with them because there was no Harold matthews when when i started training um with the storm so i started training with them I was like 15 in like a development squad so with melbourne and then just slowly worked my way up and then i didn't debut until like sg ball until i was 17 and that was like the first time i properly played for melbourne is, is that like being melbourne like being a one like city team yeah is that like when you get signed like to the storm like when you're a kid or like you're training yeah. with the development and you got the kit you yeah. got the backpack like <laughs> like yeah, that is, that, is there a bit of like you got like do you have like a bit of rep like around the like streets like with your mates in there are they yeah, like like everyone sort of knows oh well like in that rugby league world like yeah. everyone knows that like, down in melbourne like oh if you play f for the storm that's a pretty like it's a pretty big thing and um yeah that was pretty like pretty cool to like experience that and play for like that club like, like they're unreal that down there um, but yeah you always like everyone knows like if you play in the sg ball or 20s on that they know who you are like. but because you know when you got like when you're a kid and like that's what you play for like yeah i want the kit like <laughs> bro, i don't care like i used to rock all the kid eh? um <laughs> used to like take my bag to school and like just rock it proud as a eh? like and heaps of the cousins and that always oh very any 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 training shorts or something oh yeah. bro honestly <laughs> like i think like and that's bro that's like it doesn't matter where you go like as soon as like you go back to new zealand or as soon as you come home and like yeah. some of the family comes over it's straight into your suitcase yeah. like there's not even a hello or nothing <laughs> it's like oh yo have you got us any yeah, whoa nah, whoa dude. whoa bro <laughs> no nah, they always yeah always hit you up for gear but i don't mind giving that out if i got the spare gear there bro that's mad um so what like you spoke about like your mates like you've got the same mates like did you grow up with them in yeah, school yeah. and like so, play footy and stuff together yeah so a lot of them my mates are like we grew up since we were young like um either like family friends or cousins and we just sort of like i caught like some most of my mates are like my cousins pretty much yeah but we all just grew up together like um grew up around like the same areas like all our parents knew each other like uh, we're pretty much family so then like went to same school together it wasn't until high school like I pretty much met like my main circle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in high school we all went to school together and then just went through high school together tight as and then even after school we just stayed like stayed together stayed tight. Then even when I moved away you know all those boys like even now they're still like close as boys. hanging out together yeah. I so I got the same circle since I was young. So I can't remember how old. But, yeah, so. but there's this one line um, and what song is it? Is it? brothers and it's like um how does it go i'd rather um what what's it like i'd rather ride Bro, with my, my dogs, dogs than in a bentley yeah. bah <laughs> like 100 percent, bro that's <laughs> like obviously like on the surface it's whatever you know what i mean but i was yeah. like you know like sometimes when you listen to a song and then like you're like stuck on a lyric and you're like yeah. god me like it's sitting there thinking and i'm like holy like bro that's legit like yeah. you know what i mean like 100 percent. like why would you like what's the point and i like i had a similar experience where i was like sitting at the table and like at the dinner table bro yeah. and i was just eating my dinner yeah. but it was just me like sitting at the dinner table yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was just like looking around and i was like me like i had like a mean dinner yeah but i was like bro this is dumb Not as good when nah you to, like, i'm just like yeah sitting here having a mean meal and it should feel mean like yeah. this is cool but yeah. i'd rather have my like my friends and my family around yeah. like and everyone eating you yeah, know what 100%, i mean percent yeah that's like yeah with that line yeah like i'd always rather ride with my day ones and like my close circle than ride in a flash car or like it's like they're saying like when you're like you know like if you, there's no point of having an expensive house if you've got no one to like share with you know so um yeah i'd always rather ride with my like day ones and 
just that's like, bro. Flashy, flashy that line, I was just <laughs> like, man, that like got me shook. Yeah, yeah. And um, but like talking about like obviously like with Melbourne, why? Just something that came to my mind. There's not many Victorians that actually go on to play first grade, right? Like yeah. there's like, bro, it's like what less than like you can count on one hand, yeah. eh? How many Victorians? Mahi he was the first. Yeah, like, young. Tonomafea. Richie? Richie, yeah. Um, and then there's that kid that plays yeah, now. Yeah, the young um, Aramea, Aramea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen that. Plays on the wing, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, I, I can't remember if there's any more. But, like, yeah, there's, like, especially when I, like, when I was Is coming Is that a through, Pathways thing? Or? Yeah, like, when I was coming up, like, there wasn't, like, much, like, path. There's not really that much, like, Pathways in Melbourne, eh? There's only sort of the one system like with the, through the melbourne storm and i guess if you don't sort of make that then you sort of don't really go on and like from that pathway like not many people go on to play first grade um i know with my age group when i was coming through there was like heaps of talented players like that's I, sometimes i still buzz out like how i'm here because like there's so many people that were like way more talented than me um and like just yeah just they went on to play like 20s and that but never went on to never like first on. grade. yeah um I don't know like i just sort of just stuck it out just kept working hard i guess but yeah there's there's so much talent down there but i just i don't know why i just don't seem to kick on to first grade but hopefully you know you start seeing more of them soon 100 percent. um so like i i know like a bit of your like footy journey and stuff and man it's like a lot of like ups and downs <laughs> yeah. and like but one word that comes to my mind and like is persistence yeah like you've been to how many clubs um i've been oh, i've been to heaps oh like heaps of different clubs um i was at melbourne knights um i was in one the newy local grade there lakes united um north devils and then and then the warriors i, th I think that's it yeah so like your like footy journey has taken you like literally like all yeah. of, like in like interstate and internationally yeah. like I've li oh I think I've been to like nearly every state for footy like growing up like playing rep teams or like just through like first grade and that and then like even just moving to different clubs I've lived in like obviously Melbourne lived in New South Wales like Newcastle lived in Queensland and oh, like Auckland for a bit before we came over here but it's been crazy like i just what's the traveling. like what's the because how old were you when you debuted uh 20 what was that last year 23 23 yeah and you started playing footy at the age of four yeah like so there's a 19 year gap yeah what's the um and like so many different clubs so many like opportunities yeah that haven't like come yeah. to the full effect what's like what what is it like what's your drive like why um, do you why do you continue like to plug in away like keep working at your dream yeah i don't know i just i guess i just i love the game and then i always i don't know once i sort of set out to do something like i want to like make sure I, I do it you know and like i always wanted to be an nrl player and then um i guess from since i left home at like when i was 18 to move to Newcastle, that was my first like uh, opportunity like out, out of state, and um, I don't know. I just you always get ups and downs, and there's uh, there was a couple of times where I like I was close to just giving up and just moving back home, but then I just I don't know. I just could never. I don't think I could live with myself if I didn't give it my all and you know try not to like didn't. Is it almost like a um like a fear of failing and like having to go home and like yeah. front up to that like yeah, to your I family think, and that you yeah, know what i mean I and like that's yeah probably like a fear of failing and then yeah going home and then like i, I don't want to be like a disappointment like oh he could have made it or like oh he was so close guys, yeah. yeah like you hear people like saying like oh yeah he could have made it blah, blah blah i just never wanted to be one of those guys like so i just i just kept working at it like even like it was hard like the hard like hard as but like I just kept working at it, man. Cause I like, bro, homesickness is legit. Yeah. And like when you're living away, like you said, you've been interstate. Yeah. Like you've been moving 
away from home yeah. since you were 18 yeah. like that's young bro yeah. like and like you miss your family like you're yeah. still a boy you know what i mean like just yeah. trying to navigate through life yeah. like you don't even know who you are or what the hell you're doing yeah. but you're trying to chase a dream yeah like i think like it's a huge like um oversight that people don't like like it's not appreciated like yeah. all the struggles bro like yeah. i know what it's like to be homesick it yeah. sucks bro it's the worst 100 oh, percent. like i was thinking about it the other day i was like i think this is like my sixth year like since i've left home like and it's pretty crazy because like i grew up like i was always tight like family family was everything growing up so like even just to move like from the like when i was 18 that was a pretty big thing but i guess over time you sort like you slowly I don't know if you get used to it, but you just learn to live with it. But, like, I don't know. I guess, I like, I always, ha like, had that thought in my ho head where, like, one day I'll eventually be able to go home and just chill with the fam and that. But, yeah, you get homesick, like, all the time. But, like, like we got, like, FaceTime and that. And yeah, then, 100%. Yeah. Has your family always, like, been super supportive? Like, even, like, man, I'm sure there's been times, like, where you're like, man, I just want to go home. Like, yeah. Is, like have you had to have those tough conversations with your parents where they're encouraging you to stay and like stick at it yeah yeah 100 percent. like i always like there'll be times where like i remember a couple of years ago i remember calling home saying like like i'm done like i just want to move home but then like and my mum, she was like supportive as like she was she just do whatever I'm mum's always are yeah, they're yeah. just like whatever makes you happy they boy always, yeah yeah 100 <laughs> i remember my dad was sort of like blowing me up eh? he was just like what are you gonna do come here and just do nothing like be like I don't know like the rest like of us. everyone yeah, else yeah. and then he sort of like I didn't want to hear it at the time but he was sort of right like because when you like when I go back home like like it's not a bad thing but you just see nothing's same old, changed same old, everyone's bro. doing the same thing that's nothing the like really that's changes. like it's almost like the beautiful thing about home yeah, but yeah. then it's like it's like the bad and the good about yeah. home is that it never changes yeah 100%. and like the people never change like it doesn't matter like how long you've been away from home when you yeah. go back there's still the same people on the yeah, streets yeah. still doing the same still jobs the same. and like you're like man that's what you love about home but sometimes that's why you don't want to go back there yeah yeah 100 percent. like yeah you go back it's always like it's always good to see everyone and everyone's sort of doing the same thing but i find like when i go back it, like I find it it's better when I go for like a shorter time because if I'm there for longer I just start to feel like you just feel like nothing's happening here like you want to just you get a little bit idle away like yeah. man what am I going to do now yeah like, yeah that's why I like yeah but I love like I love home and home's always yeah, home eh? that's it yeah no that's cool bro like the freaking those you have to have those tough conversations and yeah. even like when you don't want to hear it yeah. that's the best thing for you and it's 100%. it's being able to like listen and like understand and know where like your dad's coming from yeah yeah like, and although he's like sometimes they're like parents that come off as being like the kids you yeah, know what yeah. i mean and you're like just like shut the hell up <laughs> like uh, aren't you supposed to be supporting me yeah but they are they are and yeah. because they know they don't want you to be working in a factory yeah. or like you know just like a normal nine to five yeah. especially when you have like potential and talent like yourself like 100%. they just want the best for you yeah. and for you to fulfill that yeah but i'm so grateful yeah like i did, like i probably didn't like end up giving up and going back like i was just grateful i stuck it out and now i'm living like a unreal life eh? living the dream living the dream <laughs> yeah. what what's uh, like what was if you can think back to like along your journey what has what was the hardest time um i don't know um i remember i think probably 2017 in Newey. uh so i moved away uh i think when i was 18 2015 played uh Newey, uh newcastle knights 20s and then after 20s i sort of i didn't get a first grade contract yep um, like I thought I had a decent year in 20s but then I didn't get a first grade contract then I ended up they just put me on like part time with the New South Wales, oh, like New South Wales Cup yeah, yeah 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 yeah, and then um, probably like the year, it didn't go like the way I planned it two way that year I remember were you playing New South Wales Cup or were you like New South Wales Cup yeah A so grade, I started like, New local. South Wales Cup and then I think 
I got dropped uh, one game. They had a whole heap of first graders come back. Man, that then, sucks, yeah. eh? Then I ended up going to um, Newcastle, the, uh, like the, like the, just the local, yeah, yeah local the A grade. Footy. And I remember, I, like, I, I sort of just took the piss a bit and I didn't play that well. Kicking I, stones, yeah, eh? I remember I ended up doing my knee and then it put me out for like six weeks. And I, at that time, like, around that same time, like, that was when my parents split up. Oh, okay. And like, yeah, so I just had a whole, whole heap of dramas going on back home. And then, I don't know, yeah, my knee. And then, I don't know, I just, like, wasn't performing in, like, well, like the way I wanted to. And then it was just sort of, sort of caught up to me. And then, um, yeah, I was just, like, I found it a pretty tough, like, a tough time, eh? And then it's being like away from home, too, I was homesick as. Family's um, going through the yeah, wars. Yeah, family's going through the wars. And then I remember going back home and it just, like, yeah, like, there was dramas there with, like, my parents. And just, it didn't feel like wasn't that good eh but um yeah and then like just going through all that stuff it just sort of caught up to me and then when i was in new i was just i remember just on the piss every like nearly every night of the week um, oh really yeah i was on the piss bad like go out every nearly every night of the week um you know rock up to work hung over like yes and then i like yeah it was a pretty did you like, stay in the house with all the boys yeah i was only with one of the boys with another mate and then um yeah like I don't know, yeah, just found it tough, but like, the bro, like, we all good, eh? Just feel the boys. I feel like, um, that's just life, man. Sometimes, yeah. like, when it, like, rains, it pours. Yeah. Like, everything all comes at the same time, and, like, you yeah. like you almost feel like all the wars are closing in, and you're yeah. like, shit, man, like, my knee, I'm playing freaking A grade. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And like, then, yeah, actually, like, I, once I came back with my knee, I went back to the local league. But they put me in the reserve grade, so like, I was playing oh, like hell. local reserve grade, like, and I was just like, I was just so like, I was like, Fuck, what am I doing? Like? But that's like, <laughs> if you don't know local reserve grade, that's the unks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all the unks. uncles. Like, oh, I, I was like, oh, like I was carving up, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Up easy, but like, it was just so felt like felt shit as eh? just. But that's a dude with like, wheelchairs, yeah. nah. <laughs> so the unks say coming out of retirement. But they just come out just like <laughs> for their weekly assault <laughs> they just want to bash people bro yeah but nah it was like it was actually pretty like yeah like it was a tough time but like it was good like getting to experience that too like it makes me more grateful for like like where i'm at now so when we're talking like um started from the bottom yeah our means really did start from the bottom <laughs> <laughs> bro i can't believe that he got dropped back there but even then bro like i was I, was, I, st- I ended up staying in the local grade the whole year. Oh, really? Not in reserve grade, but... Uh, in, in like, A grade, yeah. But even then, like, I was... I remember I was just on the piss hard out there, and, like, I'd rock up to games, like, after a night out. Yeah. Like, just play, like... It was just, like, shit. I remember I stacked on heaps of weight. I was at, like, 125. Holy. Yeah, like, that was, like, the biggest I've ever been. And then after that year, is that where you moved up to... Yeah, and then that's North. when um, I met um, Rowan, yeah, yep. from North, yeah. And then I wasn't even going to move, to be honest. That was the year, like, I thought, I was just like, oh, nah. I was going to go back home and then I may work in that. And I remember I remember I ended up jumping in, like, because my uncle's, at, one of my uncles is a truck driver, and he was driving from up here, Queensland, to Melbourne. Yeah. I remember just, like, jumping in, like, I caught him one night, he was driving past, and then I jumped in the truck with him, took some of my stuff, and then went back to Melbourne. And I stayed there for, like, a good, like, two months. Yeah. And I remember that time, like, uh, I got a couple, like, Rowan called me a couple of times and was like, oh, look, would you still be keen to come up? And uh, I, I wasn't even, like, to be honest, I wasn't even keen. I was off footy. I was, yeah, I sort of gave up, eh? And then yeah. I was just living back home and, yeah, I was even, like, working back there and then for, like, a s- small put period and then... What changed? I don't know. I sort of, as we were talking about before, I sort of just realised, like, when I was home, like, nothing's, nothing's happening yeah, here. This is it. This is it, like, everyone's doing the same thing and then i just sort of i sort of just packed all my stuff jumped in the car and then like left like i just drove up to brizzy like i didn't really have a plan like i knew i had some family in brizzy so i stayed with my auntie and yep. uncle there i just sort of went to their house and then yeah went to north and then shout out ron smith yeah, ron eh? smith, yeah. like he's probably one of the best coaches i've ever had i've heard yeah. only good things about yeah. him bro like from like the boys like they've only said good things about yeah. him 
So like that time at North Say that just changed me heaps. Say like how many years were you there? Oh, I was there for two, two years. Yeah, two seasons. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, that was unreal. Like that. Yeah, uh, that was a good. That was a good time there at North Say, Rowan, and all everyone. Just the whole culture there. Cause yep. I remember, I think that was Rowan's first year there, and uh, like there was a whole heap of us that um, went to North and. We sort of just like turn the club around. Yeah, turn the club around, and now they're like you know playing in the prelims. Ah, minor you know, premiers. Yeah, minor premiers. Yeah, because they weren't like they were always okay because yeah. of the, their Broncos affiliation, and they always yeah. had the Broncos boys, and yeah. it's a good club. Yeah. But like I think like Rowan like from being there yeah. has like turned it around into 100%. like them being legitimate yeah. powerhouses. Yeah, hundred percent. He was just he was a real just just a gun coach, you know, just real dedicated to footy and helping you get better and not even on like just better on the field like off the field too yeah like, i remember i started man it like, looked like a good time yeah i remember because like he's big on reading and that was like a, he did like a book club that was the first time i ever properly hey, started to book read club. Like, yeah and like there's like sh- stuff like that you know like that's different bro it's like a different culture in that day and like um yeah i was always grateful for my time there and also like met so many good people in that day um because we're obviously like um i knew some of the boys at norse and like we'd always see your guys stuff on instagrams and like yeah. bro you were like hanging out like yeah. every single day yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like there was actually like a brotherhood there yeah 100%. like we used to like not even just on the weekends after the game getting on the piss yeah. and that but you all like at each other's house yeah. i don't know whose house it was yeah but even the boys were like even like everyone would train together and just like yeah. want, to, want to do good and get better for each other and then yeah like we'd always be on the piss like just having good times in that day and like I'm Yo. still close to some of the boys and like we always stay in touch and that like so it's a good like brotherhood there that's mad because yeah. you went from like your first year you were like coming off the bench hey, a lot yeah at Norse yeah yeah uh, I think I was sort of like like half and half yeah, starting yeah, yeah. and then off the bench like yeah but like um yeah, like I had a I had a decent first year there, and I remember even after that year I was like, because I didn't hear nothing. I actually got I think it was like a offer with Sunny Coast, yeah, and I could have done the preseason with Melbourne, but I, I ended up turning it down because I just I wanted to stay at North. Loved like I there. loved it there, and then um, yeah, and then the second year obviously had a better year, and then got the Warriors opportunity from that. Because I like people don't um, realize this, but you're actually. Your um your big like crack like your first looking was at Tarawa for more <laughs> <laughs> yeah nah <laughs> yeah, that was a good time too eh? that when was that just before that was the first year so after your first year at Norths yeah 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 um oh. that was your first year because remember you went you played Norths the second year and we tried to get you back and you brushed us for the Warriors oh that's right yeah it was it was too yeah 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 actually. I think it was, oh, yeah. yeah, because you played that first year. I think it was 20... 19 or 18. 18. You played for us. Yeah. And then you played North the next yeah, year. Yeah, and then we right. tried to get you to come back again. And yeah. you brushed us for the Warriors. No. <laughs> no right. hard feelings, nah, bro. That was good, eh? Yeah. But I remember... Oh, did you play at the North in Sydney, that one? Yeah. Is that... Yeah, I think I remember that one, that North... That was like just before I went to North Devils, and then. Oh, were you playing? Yeah, I played there. I Who were you playing for? North, you know North Maldives. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I played there with Kaino. That was. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. That was it. Yeah. Because he was the one that put us onto you. Yeah, that was just before I moved to North. Like, so like. You played there. Yeah. But yeah, no, nah, those are they, like those are unreal. Those comp say like North. Like even the one back in New Zealand, eh? Like bro, I st- bro, I still have like dudes, like uncles and that. They're like, yo, Jermaine. I yeah. said, bro, you don't even know him. And he <laughs> was like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> nah, like I still even like some of the boys and that, like we message you and that every now and then. Bro, they still like, they're like, nah, that's my boy. And <laughs> I'm like, bro, you've met him once. <laughs> like, you nah, know what I mean? That's all love, eh? Fuck. Because um, um, I like that second year, bro, at North's god yeah. like <laughs> honestly like you killed it like that year you know what i mean like yeah. and then like you thought you had a good year yeah. like how did this whole like warriors like 
coming to like roller yeah. coaster because I'm gonna call it a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. Because everything with that club is a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, how did that all start? Um, I think so. I had like I had a pretty good year that year, twenty nineteen. Oh, don't be modest. That was gone. <laughs> yeah, had a yeah, had a gun year, and then um, I think I didn't hear anything until like after the season. I remember. Um, I think it was Rowan sort of said, "Oh, like I think this." Might it was be late in the PC because yeah. we were like. You're like, yo, sweet, keen, yeah. Maldives, that's yeah, us. Yeah. Like, and then last minute, like, as we're about to yeah. book the flights, you're like, oh, nah, cuz yeah, um, like, I'm going to the Warrior. And I was like, huh? <laughs> yeah. We're like, what? Yeah. And then I'm like telling them, I was like, bro, Jermaine's out. And yeah. then all the boys are like, what the? Yeah, I remember, like, I remember one, me and one of the boys were at the driving range one day. And I looked at my phone. I had a missed call from a New Zealand number. And I was like, looking at it, I was like, I don't know what this is, and I checked my voicemail, and then Wait, not um, the, not the uh, uh, what does Auntie want again? <laughs> I was like, oh, what, what the hell is this? And then like I, I called, I uh, checked my voicemail, and it was um yeah Peter Sullivan, the recruitment manager, yep. and then I ended up calling him back, and he spoke to me and just said like, oh like there's not like we can't guarantee your contract or nothing, but there's a opportunity here for a training trial, like if you'd be interested. They love that line, eh? Yeah. <laughs> they love that oh, oh there's nothing really there's here no guarantees yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but make do of it like what you like you know you're just like oh so they gave you an opportunity yeah um like but even that like even though like they say oh there's no guarantees yeah bro just a phone call yeah you know I know, I mean? just to get that i was buzzing out i was like oh, bro, this, oh, that's crazy and then i was sort of just like wow like i could be in new zealand next year like I was just buzzing out. But I think we sort of worked it out with um, Rowan and that too. So, like, I was supposed to do the training trial and then if it didn't work out, just, just come back, back to North Sea. So, like, I was pretty, like, sweet with that. That, that was nice of Rowan to loan you to the Warriors, eh, for the <laughs> yeah. off-season? Nah, thanks for that, <laughs> eh? Was, um, yeah. So, you did the... So, you moved again over to New Zealand yeah. and you did the pre-season. So, you're on a training trial? Yeah, yeah. Training was training. it just for the first part of the preseason? Because you know yeah. how they do like a. Yeah, nah. I think it was like the full preseason. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. So I went over there, moved to Auckland. I just stayed at the Warriors' house there. Bro, but like people don't realize there were there were there were so many props oh, at the yeah, Warriors. Yeah. Like, hundred percent. Yeah. What were you in the picking order? Like tenth or? Oh like, yeah, yeah. I would have been like pretty low as like low as down there, and then like. I remember going over there and I was thinking like, Fuck, like how am I going to get a contract with like there's heaps of like all these good good players with first grade experience like what was your first preseason like? Um, it was tough eh it was hard eh because like I hadn't done like a hard preseason like since under 20s and that because like, like the Q Cup ones are hard but like they're nowhere near like a first grade yeah, level yeah. but yeah like I found it hard but it, it was good at the same time because like you're doing it full time, like you can, you got put everything into yeah, it. You don't have to get to work it. tomorrow. Yeah. That was the thing, like that I hated about Q Cup and that is you you work like, like bust your off, bust your ass off at work all day and then you come to train and you're exhausted and like and then and they still expect like a first grade standard. Eh? Oh yeah, 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 hundred percent. And I I guess like that's the part of the journey, eh? like that you're always grateful for. Eh? Like I don't want to go back to labouring jobs, but like I'm grateful I did it. Now I appreciate this more. Gives like, you um but a perspective on yeah. life, eh? Like, damn, I don't want to be on these tools. Yeah, nah, I hated it, eh? Like, just digging holes. Because what were you doing? Just labouring? Yeah, I did heaps of labouring jobs, eh? Like, just, um, I was doing the NBN, like, stuff for a bit, like, yeah. um, we are doing the, like, like the, the lines. cables to the houses yeah. and, like, the cables and that, running the lines and that. Um, I did other jobs, like, picking, packing, um, Jack of all trades, eh? Yeah, done yeah everything. I've done quite a few labouring jobs, eh? Just normal... Because um, that's all they get, like, when you get a footy gig and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll get you a job. Yeah, yeah. It ain't no nice job. Yeah, they get you the, the yeah. hard labouring jobs, yeah. eh? And because all these, like, all the labourers, like, all the companies and that, they love, you know, footy players. Yeah. Big, strong, like, boys to, you know, work for them, work hard. But, yeah, I'm grateful I did that because, like, I like, appreciate it more now. Eh? Hard. No, that's cool. And so you did your preseason, yeah. Like, and when you played, because you played Indigenous All yeah, Stars, yeah. were you signed before you played nah, Indigenous? So I wasn't signed before that. That was so that was like my first like big opportunity. Yeah, eh? I remember going through the preseason and like, 
like I, I felt pretty like felt pretty good like yeah i had a pretty decent pre-season um and then yeah i got the opportunity i think uh one of the mates how'd you get there um so i think one of my mates in that was like um like he had sort of ha- had something to do with the indigenous yep. squad and he said like he felt like knew that they were low on they were low on middles like they yep. had heaps of injuries and stuff and then he sort of just put my name to them he knew i had a ch- like training child with the warriors and he just put my name to them and then i remember getting a call from laurie daly eh, like, yep. and i was buzzing out when when he called me i was like where is this like legit and he just said like oh they're, they're pretty low on middles and yeah, he just said like he was going to give me opportunity to play in the all-stars how was that bro yeah. like ah oh, that was that was unreal eh? that was like it just felt like it was so surreal, eh? Like, Obviously, yeah. you're like a proud indigenous man, yeah. but on the flip side, you're actually playing your own people as well. Yeah, yeah. So that was a bit like weird too, is because like, like I'm both I'm proud to be from you know, yeah both both Maori and indigenous. Um, yeah, but like it was pretty crazy just to you know um, get a call up into that squad and like the squad like there's so many gun players playing right. in that game, and like just that whole week was unreal like being around all these like superstars and um yeah it just it, they actually gave me a lot of confidence eh? like being around everyone is like yo wow, like i can be like this like too. i'm here yeah, now I'm here, like yeah. we're like on the same field yeah. we're passing the same ball yeah straight up like i'm here yeah this i remember they gave me the fit like my first when, you took um, the kickoff eh? yeah Laurie da- i remember when Laurie daly um because how did you get a start yeah because they like, started they you eh? lower middles yeah and then like i remember you told me like the day before the game he's like oh mate like we're probably gonna look at starting you and then i was just like i remember what i was like the? never says i was like bro this Wait, is crazy please don't kick it to me yeah, yeah. please don't kick it and to then me and i remember running out and then like i was running out i was so nervous like the like, full stadium at gold coast i was i ran out but that was hectic we were yeah. there oh, watching yeah, yeah, we were there yeah. watching that was hectic um yeah that was unreal and then i remember sitting there like on the kickoff we were kicking off and then i'm like here we go i bet you they're gonna kick it to me because <laughs> like, who was the other prop uh josh kerr was the other one uh, ah yeah, yeah but he had like some first yeah they knew who he was time, yeah and um yeah I, I was like oh these guys are gonna kick it to me yeah i remember just my legs i was just shaking i was like oh doing the shaky yeah. leg <laughs> <laughs> bro and then like they kicked it off came to me and i was like oh here we go Ran it up, and I remember Adam Blair was. Yeah, like, he shot out. Yeah, eh? he shot out of the line. Got me like, got me pretty good. Eh? And it sort Cause of. Because what like, he's he was at the Warriors with you, eh? Yeah. So yeah, he knew yeah. who you were. Yeah, yeah. So he. Knew so he's probably right. like, kick it to him, yeah, kick it yeah. to him. And I remember, yeah, he put a shot on me. It's sort of just like a welcome to first grade thing, eh? That's mad, um, bro. But yeah, after that, like, how how sick. is it though? Like, that's bro. That's not first grade, like that's indigenous all-stars yeah. bro like you got superstars yeah. like a stacked team like a rep team yeah. and that's your introduction to oh, yeah. professional like top level footy it was crazy yeah because it was like so much more faster more intense like physical than anything i've ever played so like to get thrown straight into that i was like what the hell looking back like when you're standing there in the end goal and you know the kick's coming for you yeah. like what's your mindset because i think yeah. like Man, people that haven't played prop, yeah. they don't appreciate, like, the mana that it takes yeah. to run back, like, to stand yeah. there, and, like, you don't know where the ball's going, yeah. like, you know what I mean? And you're like, is it coming to me? Yeah. Is it going to him? Is it going short? Yeah. Is it going out? <laughs> like, all those variables, yeah. they're literally going in your head, and yeah. you're just like, all right, let's rock and roll. Yeah. Like, what was nah, your I sorta, mindset? I sort of had a, a feeling it was going to come to me, like, when I when I knew they were kicking off, I was like, oh, I bet you they're going to kick it to me, they don't, like, young fella, like. No they're gonna grade. test you they're gonna test me out and then i was sort of nervous and then and then once i seen the ball come up i just started just jam myself up i'm like oh, here we go and run it up and then yeah <laughs> Gone. but after, that, after that yeah i was in the game and like i felt sweet but like it was so fast more intense than like anything i'd ever played so like but i was sort of like i was grateful for that because once i did play first grade it was i found it not easier but like you already like, knew what I to was expect. A bit more comfortable, yeah. Going yeah. from that level to first grade, like yeah, bro. Because like from we're sitting up in the stands, like closest to you, yeah. And we're sitting with um, like all the because the women's played before, yeah. So we're sitting with all like the into Maori, like all the women's in there, yeah, yeah. And like all their family, yeah. Oi, and um, and I was like cheering for you, <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> shut the hell up. <laughs> They're like, who even is that guy? Yeah. And I was like, shut, shut up. <laughs> yeah. 
and then like even like my like my missus like obviously knew from Maldives and that yeah. and they were like man this is crazy like yeah. and I think like you said Laurie Daly like said to you oh we've had some injuries like yeah bro that's literally like from all stars bro the amount of people like that got injured yeah. like at the warriors in yeah, your position yeah. it was like bro there goes another one yeah there goes another one and we're si- i'm like sitting here like looking watching the news and i'm like so are they gonna sign jermaine yeah. or like bro like and you hear it and like it's like man like you're gutted for the player but yeah. because like i'm your mate i'm like yeah Yo, yeah. yo, like we're on here, like he's gonna like get signed in there. Yeah, no, nah, I remember. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, just seeing how like all the middles were getting injured, and um, I think that's when Sam Lasone went to the Titans, and there was yeah, there was heaps of like opportunities there in the middle. Like people were, like just they were dropping like flies. Yeah, yeah, and then um, yeah, sort of like well, like you, you don't even, like wish that on anyone. Nah, hell that. no. But like yeah, sort of just gave me an opportunity, and once they signed me, I was. Like, I was, you know, pumped and keen, eh, like, to play first grade. How's that call, like, after, like, you know, like, everything, like, that you've been through, like, with your family and that, like, yeah. what's, like, how's those good phone calls, like, being able to make those phone calls, you know what I yeah. mean, like, that you're playing Indigenous, that you've got signed, yeah. shit, that you made your debut, like, yeah. what, what, like, how's that phone call compared to, like, you know, when you're like, man, I want to come home. Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, I hate it's, this. It's so like, oh, it's like an unreal feeling, eh? Like, I remember getting, I remember getting that call, like, that I was playing All Stars, and I remember sort of like when I was in the. Did your family come up? Yeah, they all come up for that. Um, yeah, I remember just like, I remember there was a moment there, like before the game, where I was just like, I sort of just looking back at the whole journey, and I was just like, bro, this is crazy. Like, I'm and here. Then, yeah, and then when I, I remember when I told like. Um, like my parents and that they were like so happy at, like happy as and it was just like yeah it sort of hit me like or everything that sort of just led up to this it was crazy that's it bro your journey has been crazy like the yeah. fact that like and it's like you were just like in the right place at the right time like yeah type of thing in terms of like getting all stars you sort of did it backwards you played rep before you had even played first yeah, grade yeah I know yeah it was crazy eh like to go to that like straight into the rep level and then yeah so when did you make your debut so i made my debut round one last year or so like not long after the all-stars uh we played the dragons oh no no not the dragons. no not the dragons. the knights sorry the knights jeez that was a miserable day eh? yeah that was raining i remember I, i'll never forget that game actually what's it like getting there how did you find out that you were playing first grade did you think that you were going to be playing first grade that round one yeah, so like once all the um, like once all the uh, like they like I heard about the injuries and all that, and then I got signed, and then I sort of like had a feeling I was like, oh, maybe looking like, around, eh? Like, like looking around, yeah. like. And then like when we started doing trainings, and I was like sort of in the seventeen that were training, uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, 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 maybe I'm like gonna play, and then like on the yeah on the game week, I, like I found out, yeah, it was on a debut, and then. Yeah, it was just buzzy as it, and then yeah, went down to Newcastle, and it was crazy because that's where like that's where your journey was. That's like where part of my journey was, and like I had some good. Boy, that's there, where you know? the lowest point of your journey was. Yeah, in true. Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The irony, eh, of yeah. like the full circle, like yeah, freaking like having your lowest point in Newcastle yeah. where you want to like throw it all in, yeah, and then like debuting there first yeah. grade, bro. That's crazy. It was crazy, yeah. And then I remember they flew up my parents and that was yep. just before the COVID stuff yeah so my whole family were there and then like That's in my mean, debut man. jersey and it was just yeah it was buzzy as um to do it there but then it was a miserable day and then that's after that it's been a roller coaster since like it's when like we what's when all the COVID stuff happened i haven't been back to new zealand since then so. probably like like your journey like to get to like your first grade debut and like finally reaching your dream <laughs> has been like a whirlwind roller coaster yeah and like a heck of a journey and then like now you're in first grade with the warriors heck let's start another ju- like <laughs> like roller coaster i know yeah i think since then like i've just been living out of the suitcase for the last two years just moved we've moved to that many different places like a lot of you hear it on the media like and they're like 
Oh, we're so grateful for the warriors and for their sacrifice and for everything they've done and yeah, yeah. rah 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 rah. But you're one of the warriors. What's it like, bro? Like everyone's like, man, yeah. this is freaking crazy. Like some dudes like who have signed yeah. haven't even bloody been to New Zealand, yeah, like, let alone played at Mount Smart yeah. or like come from there, like or had a home game. Like, yeah. what's it like being on that roller coaster, bro? Yeah, no, nah, it's pretty like it's pretty crazy, like just moving around everywhere and that. But like for me, like, cause I I don't have any like family or kids and that, like, so I'm easy, like I can just move and I don't have no responsibilities and that. But I guess for some of the people with like um, families and partners and kids and that, like, I guess it's a bit harder. But I think now we're sort of like we're a bit more like content with it. Like we know this is our situation. Like we sort of just have to get on with it now. Like. I know next year, like, we'll be good like and ready. Like, we've got the whole 12 months. So. Set in stone, eh? Yeah, like, so. you've actually got, like, some... It's like a like, bit of consist- stability. Yeah, yeah, stability and, like, consistency and, like, your livelihood. Yeah. Man, like, frick, bro. People, like, don't, I like, understand the depths of your guys' sacrifice. Yeah. And, like, let alone, oh, man. And I hate people when they get on and they're like... Oh, but they get paid this amount of money. They yeah. they're just footy players. So, yeah. like, and then they start wanging on about oh the miners and the fifos and all this and all <laughs> that. Yeah, cuz that's all good, sweet. <laughs> but that's all a part of the job description. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just play footy. Like, yeah. you know, when you sign your NRL deal, it doesn't say, all right, so we'll have you in Tamworth yeah. for uh, two months, yeah. and then we'll move you to the Central Coast. Yeah. And then depending on that, like. <laughs> Like there's yeah, those like variables aren't just, in there, bro. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's hard too, cause like you don't expect to like just be moving and all, all that. But um, yeah, I think we're sort of like a bit used to it now, like, and now that we know we have got some stability, it's you have done like an. Bro, I gotta take my hat off to you, bro. Like you have done an incredible job. Yeah. Like I'm a diehard warrior supporter, like yeah. since I was like a kid growing up in New Zealand. You know what I mean? And yeah, like shit it's a roller coaster following you guys yeah. but like when you're like looking at it from your guys point of view like from the players and like man the dudes with kids yeah. like with wives like especially last year when they were like not together and stuff like yeah bro that's crazy like and yeah. it, like you cannot not support you guys yeah and like even sh- when even you lose man shit we don't even care <laughs> as long as the boys are having a crack you know what i yeah, mean we're like yeah, bah all good we don't care like as long as the boys are having a dig we'll, we'll cop the owl as a supporter yeah that's it yeah i guess yeah we're sort of used to it now like done the sacrifices and that i think next year it's sort of a bit different i don't think anyone's looking for that sort of like pity from everyone like we yeah. just we just want to try to win next year and just have a crack yeah, because that's not your guys' mindset. Like, yeah. you don't go out there thinking, oh, man, I've sacrificed all this stuff. Yeah, no, I'm no. going to go out there and just, um, and valiantly cop an L. Yeah. No, like, shit, you just want to win. <laughs> like, bro, no one goes out there to lose, no yeah. matter, like, how shit your week is. And it doesn't matter, like, if you're an NRL player or if you're playing reserve grade. Like, yeah. you don't go out there to lose, bro. No, no. <laughs> like, yeah, you always go out there to have a crack. You, 100%. You don't want to lose, no. Like, whatever you're playing, like, yeah. It doesn't matter what level, like, you always want to win. Yeah. Like, it's not, you don't want the, like, thanks for coming, yeah. guys. Like, <laughs> bah, that, um, <laughs> when you guys played Melbourne yeah. last year, and they came into the sheds, um, oh, like, yeah, after yeah, it, like, yeah. you know, like, some people were like, oh, man, that was so nice of, like, <laughs> like, Cam Smith and, like, and all them, like, coming in and thanking yeah. the Warriors what for like like yeah, and then the other dudes are like stuff there like <laughs> bruh we want to like we're com- competitors like we don't want you like tapping our asses yeah, like yeah, yeah. thanks thanks for the two points yeah. like nah. what's it what was it like as a player to like yeah i guess it was, it was pretty buzzy like to have them come and talk to us yep. like they, especially like cameron smith craig bellamy but then yeah like at the same time it was like well like we're, we're just here to compete like we're, we're not here to hear any like you know any of that yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. thanks for your sacrifice and that like we just we, we just went out there and like just didn't perform and we're not looking for like a like a yeah 
one of those thanks for your sacrifices <laughs> things but we'll take the two points yeah. but it is what it is yeah like, I don't know um yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like an individual thing too, eh? Like, yeah. I'm sure like different people would have like taken it differently. Yeah, like, yeah I wasn't like, too phased by it. Like, it was, it was pretty cool to have them like come yeah, in. Yeah, sweet. But then, at the same time, I was like, oh, we're not looking for that. We just want to, yeah, compete. Carry on. Yeah, we we'll just get on with it. All right, man. That's mad. So like, <laughs> you had a um, this year you like went on a loan deal. Yeah, to the dragons. To, to yeah. the dragons. How was that? Like, yeah, no, that was that was pretty mad, eh? Like to go experience like what life was at a different club because I haven't done that at first grade level like going to any other club yep. so like it was pretty cool when I, I remember when I I think I remember Brownie told me at training because I wasn't in the squad I was sort of like and you're not playing eh? yeah no I wasn't playing at the time and they, there was no like Q Cup or nothing so they, I remember uh, Brownie told me at training like oh um, and I think that's when they had that thing with the barbecue uh, the dragons ah oh, beauty yeah the so barbecue. Like, there was a lot of boys suspended in that so they were looking for players and then yeah I remember yeah Brownie told me at training that there's an opportunity for like a loan deal if, if I was keen for it it was like because you only didn't up have to, to take it yeah out. I don't have to take it it was just completely up to me but I thought you know like I wasn't playing footy at the time and I just wanted to have a rant, like have a run so then yeah like I went to the dragons and I spent I think probably like a month there did you do you stay did you move in with them yeah, so like I moved down to, so where were we? Central Coast. I moved down to Wollongong and spent like two days there and then that's when we had to pack up and come up here. Yeah. So like I spent, yeah, two days down there in Wollongong and then like full train with them and then, yeah, moved up to Brisbane with them and then I stayed in the Brisbane hub with them when we did like our two-week quarantine. Thing. Yeah. So yeah, went into camp with those boys and like they're, they're legends, eh? Like they're a good bunch of blokes and um it was just yeah it was cool to see like a different side of um like another club in there yeah and how they different culture yeah. different players yeah. different coach but no like i enjoyed that eh? like it was a good couple of weeks and good to get a run you know when i wasn't playing so and i think like a lot of people would like they were would be in your position would be like no nah, i don't want to go and play for another club yeah, like yeah. Th- why the hell would i want to do that yeah um but bro, if you're not playing footy, like that's yeah. you're a footy player. That's what you want to be doing is exactly, playing footy. Yeah. So you do anything to get around. You just want to, yeah, that's exactly right. You want to be playing as much as you can. And I, I remember thinking, sort of like, I was just like, like you know, some, this is gonna be something I look back on one day and be like, oh, I played like for the Dragons as well. Like it's Hard. pretty buzzy, like to say that. Nah, that's mad. Um, so now that like there's a bit of normality to your guys lives like you know where you are for the next year yeah what's your journey look like from here on in yeah so at the moment like in the off season eh, i've just just been enjoying it trying to stay like active as i can but um i've been going hard out with the music too eh? like especially in the off season like that's sort of my time where i just go hard out with my music and like, yeah so i'm passionate pretty passionate about that so i want to try to do as much as that as i can and and then yeah, um, obviously ne- going into next year, I just want to try have a good year and you know play consistently throughout the season. And yeah, you're the man, bro. Straight <laughs> up, <laughs> like to see like where you've come from and like all the like obstacles and the trials and things that you've had to go through. Yeah. Like to full circle, come back and play like first grade and live out your dream, bro, is like a testament to like your family. And like the way that they like the person that they raise, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like you said, man, your dad didn't want you to be like one of those guys, like yeah. one of the unks that was the meanest like in high school, <laughs> but now he's a labourer or yeah. like he's working on the roads and it's like no disrespect to like the boys putting in the mahi, but it's oh, like yeah. you actually fulfilled your potential and yeah, like yeah. and now you're reaping the rewards and living out your dream, bro. It's like yeah, yeah amazing like from an outsider like looking in but i'm just like grateful that you like took out the time to come here today and like share a bit about your journey and like what it's like for a person not necessarily the athlete yeah yeah, you know like what it's like as a person dealing with um being an athlete playing first grade the journey to get there you know what i mean because Footy's only this much yeah, of your yeah. life. Like it's such a small portion of like your life, but the way that you've been able to like 
navigate your way through and like overcome your obstacles bro testament and shout out to your family and your parents like for the man that they've raised bro nah thanks bro I appreciate that yeah. thank you for um coming on and sharing a little bit about your journey um hopefully we get you on again soon yeah sweet thanks for having me thanks my guy pleasure, my bro <laughs>